Hey everyone, Sparrowhawk here with another episode of Cinderella Phenomenon. I realize it's been ages since I last uploaded a video for this series, but uh, seeing how I've been in a role here with uh, getting through some of these games here in my library, I decided I'd uh, pick it up again and see if we can get through these routes. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Chapter 1, The March In When I open my eyes, I am still on the streets. I must have fallen asleep. But the nightmare continues. I am cold in my rags. I hold myself for warmth, willing some of the cold away, but fail. My feet are numb in pain, caked in a dirt that I have gathered from walking barefoot around town. Well, there's a frightful sight. Beggar probably thought she could try her luck with the nobility that live around here. Ah, just look at how ragged she looks. What are you looking at? At two women that lack the basic manners of, no of a noble upbringing? Silence, girl. Do you know who you're talking to? No, and I don't care. What nerve. Let's just go. There's no reason to stoop to a commoner's level. I will remember you. And once I break this curse, I will make you regret your words. I become acutely aware of the fact that I have not eaten anything for almost a day. I have been sitting here thinking on the new mess that is my life. But moping around will not break my curse. Crying will not help either. I should find that witch first. But how? I have no idea where she is. Delora, I swear I will make you regret doing this to me. When I find you, I... I will find food first. Is this all the king thinks I'm worth? Leave, girl. A dirty peasant like you has no place in this restaurant. But why? I, I can pay. Find another place. You're scaring away my customers. Am I not a customer? Shoo. There is nothing for you here. He just swatted me away like a fly. The nerve. Sensing that this will get me nowhere, I ball my hands into fists and walk away. I get the same treatment at the next three restaurants I try. I am treated as something less than dirt. Like, my money has no real value. I am the crown princess. They have no right to turn me away like this. I have been eating stale bread and anything to keep the hunger at bay. The bread barely helps. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice a small bakery. There are croissants on display that make my mouth water. Slowly, I begin to make my way over there. Ah, oh, my feet ache with every step. They look and feel even worse than before. If only I had enough coins for a pair of shoes. But food is more important. If the rags that I am wearing and the pouch of money are all that I have, then I need to prioritize. And I will die before I beg. Two croissants? You'll need to pay, girl. There are no free handouts here. I take a coin from my pouch and hand it to her. They should be more than enough. The shop owner stares at the coin before reluctantly taking it. She hands me two croissants in a paper bag. I will not ask where you got those coins. Are you implying that I stole them? How else would a beggar like you get that amount of coin? Now be off with you, child. I won't have you scaring away any other customers. Without another word, I turn and start to walk away from the woman. So this is the goodness of the people of Angiel. I take a bite out of one of the croissants, cringing a little at the dryness. Hey girl, what now? We saw you at the shop. Wanna share how you got those coins? Excuse me? Look at her, brushing us off like she's royalty or something. Let me go. You ain't no better than us. Now, 
Be a good girl and hand over that pouch. The man on my left grabs at my pouch and attempts to yank it away from me. I will not let these brutes take anything from me. I elbow the man in the stomach, then aim a kick at the other man's shin. I have an opening and I take it. Whoa. I pull myself free and begin to run as fast as I can. Hey! Where do I go? I'm not familiar with the streets at all. It's highly likely I'm just going to hit a dead end. Where should I go? Hmm. Let's go left. I cannot let the pain in my feet or my exhaustion stop me. If I stop now, they will definitely catch me. And taking my coins might not be the worst thing they do. A dead end. Nowhere left to run now, girl. What do I do? Oh, who are you, gentlemen? This is definitely not how you treat a lady. Huh? Who's there? A shadow looms above us. Before I can blink, a person has jumped down in front of me. His body acts as a barrier between the two men and me. Huh? Who are you? Oh, me? Just a passing gentleman concerned about a damsel in distress. He turns to the men, his expression calm, his eyes flashing dangerously. Okay, why does this look like the beautiful woman we saw at the doll shop? Now, shall I teach you gentlemen a lesson? He's got a sword. What? Come back here, you coward. The two of us can take him. I think your friend has the right idea. I'm not the type to show mercy. This is way too much trouble for a little gold. Okay, that's definitely the beautiful lady. Are you alright, my lady? You found her. The boy from yesterday? A little slow, aren't you, kid? Oh, don't call me that. These two know each other? I don't even know what's going on anymore. I feel ill. My head is pounding and my feet feel simultaneously like they are frozen and on fire. My stomach rumbles, the hunger coming back with vengeance. My body feels light. Princess! Princess! Lady Parfait will be able to help her. You're right. We need to move now before anyone else sees us. Yeah. Hang in there, princess. Everything is fading. A dream? What is in your hands, Lucette? I... It was hurt. I just wanted to help it, but... But it died. It's all my fault. It is not your fault, my love. It died because it was weak. But... This is the world, Lucette. Only the strong survive. The weak get cast aside to die. You are not weak. You are strong, my crown princess. And you do not cry. Now wipe your tears. I don't want to see you cry again. Do you understand? Yes. Now get rid of that thing and wash your hands. Did you not hear me, child? Yes, mother. Oh, you're awake. Where am I? Ah, well, um, this isn't my room. My hand flies to my chest where the little glass slipper hangs from my neck. still here. Uh, are you okay, miss? This girl is the maid that tore Dolores' dress. The one I fired for her clumsiness. Miss? To think that I would meet her again here, like this. Um, leave me alone. Right, of course. Um, here's some self I made for you. It'll help with the pain. haven't thought at all, have you, Ice Princess? You! Suddenly there she is. Dolores stands before me with the snide smile looking happy with herself. 
She is the cause of everything I have been through. All the pain, heartache, and hunger, it's her fault. I tried to stand, thinking to give the witch a piece of my mind, but as soon as my feet touch the floor, pain shoots up my legs. I end up falling back to the bed. Ow! You should be more grateful to the girl you just scared away. She's been taking care of you for the past two days. Two days? I've been passed out for two days? I'm suddenly vibrating with anger. Remove the curse. Now. <laughs> Do you think you can command me to remove the curse in your best princess voice? What do you want? Gold? What I want is worth more than all the gold you could summon in Angiel, princess. Besides, haven't you read your fairy tales? The caster cannot take a curse back. You need to focus on breaking the curse yourself if you want your life back. Mother burnt books before I could read more than one or two of them. I do not think I either involved curses. Just genies and trading away your voice for legs. Ah, it's good that you're awake, princess. Parfait, should you really be up and about? Don't fuss. I'm feeling much better. Are you a witch as well? Oh no, my, my name is Parfait, and I am a fairy. A witch and a fairy in one room? Being friendly with one another? Impossible. Oh, look at her face. You weren't expecting that at all, were you, princess? What's going on? I'm sure you have many questions, princess. How do you know that I'm a princess? Don't be silly. She's a fairy. Of course she knows. I promise we'll do our best to answer your questions. I don't even know where to start. What would you like to know? Alright, let's start with why I was cursed. Seriously? You're really going to ask that? I wouldn't have asked it if I knew the answer. You have such a temper on you. Very well. This one's got a simple answer. It's because you're a cold-hearted, cruel, wicked princess who deserves to be punished. Delora! A curse is the only way to force you to change your horrid ways. Delora, you could have put that more nicely. I'm pretty sure I was already being nice. Change? Why do I need a change? Are you completely unaware of how heartless you are to other people? The coldness you show to your stepfamily and your father? The way you treat Princess Imelagine? Why would they need to be treated any differently? You need to prove that you have some goodness in you, Princess. Some smidge of kindness. Why? People only show you kindness when they want something from you. The instant they get what they want, they'll, th they'll just throw you away. Alright, let's figure out how to break the curse. The necklace you've got is one of Cinderella's glass slippers. To break the curse, you must get the second slipper. Complete the pair. And how do I do that? By doing three good deeds. What? It's a very easy thing to do. At least for someone who knows how to be good. Three good deeds? What does that even mean? I wouldn't even know where to start. Take heart, princess. Goodness is innate in everyone. Are you sure that's the case with this one? Delora, you're not helping. I am a witch, and I think I have more goodness in my big toe than she has in her entire body. Now you're just being mean. For every good deed you accomplish, you will get a piece of the glass slipper. When you've gotten all three, you'll complete the pair, and the curse will be, bro be broken. Simple. I suggest you start by polishing that attitude of yours. Alright, let's have... <laughs> What happens if I don't break the curse? I think you know the answer to that one already, princess. Okay. Why are you two working together? To answer that, we'll have to give you a bit of a history lesson. Oh. 
I've got this. Once upon a time in a kingdom far, far away, there were two crystals. Dramatics aside, there is one crystal in the kingdom called the Crystallum Lucius. It is powered by happiness and love. The other is the Crystallum Tenebrarium, powered by fear and anger. The strongest of the witches is the Tenebrarium Bearer. The strongest of the fairies is the Lucis Bearer. Parfait is the Lucis Bearer. I take in Parfait's frail and sickly appearance. She's the strongest fairy? The Great War greatly damaged me. My powers are a fraction of what they used to be. And with no child, I have no successor to my burden. Oh, what does a bear do? The bears regulate the energy of the crystals and keep the balance between darkness and light. For centuries, the fairies and witches lived in harmony with the humans of the kingdom. Until a certain human decided to be a pest. Uh, who was he? I knew him as Hans Gabriel Grimm. He wrote the fairy tales. And he started the feud between the witches and the fairies in the process. Uh, how could a single person have so much power? It was the power of his words. In Grimm's stories, the witches were always evil. The humans naturally grew to fear and hate them. They began to hunt them. But didn't the witches fight back? We aren't allowed to use our powers to cause harm. But that all changed when the Tenebrarium Bearer decided revenge was more important than our promise. The witches took over the kingdom. They created the fairy tale curse to spread even more sadness and anger, to fill the human heart with negative emotions, all to fuel the power of the Tenebrarium. The delicate balance of harmony between the two crystals was broken. The witches and the Tenebrarium grew far stronger than they were ever meant to be. We had no choice but to fight. And then the Great War happened. The Tenebrarum Bearer was eventually defeated. The Great War was ended with the help of an unexpected ally, but many lives were lost. The Good Witches suffered horribly. We still have to stay hidden in hopes of having any kind of peace. Are you trying to make me believe that there are Good Witches? The Tenebrarum can poison the heart and mind into darkness and cruelty. The witches put themselves at risk in working with the Tenebrarum and maintaining harmony. Some, inevitably, are corrupted. Many good witches were corrupted during the war. Most remain that way. Many do not believe it, but witches can be just as kind as fairies. And yet, it wasn't a fairy that cursed me. I've done good by cursing you, princess. You'll thank me when you've broken it. Laura was not corrupted by the Tenebrarum. She is as good as they come. Hopefully you'll come to see that for yourself. I doubt it. Apart from my own inherent goodness, Parfait and I are working together because we have a common goal, which is to restore the balance between the darkness and light. Three good deeds and I get my life back. Easier said than done. You said Cinderella, didn't you? Didn't she just go to a ball and find a prince? What does doing good have to do with that? Going to a ball, finding a prince is all so old-fashioned. No fun in that. Cinderella is a girl with a pure heart. She's always willing to help others, even when they are cruel to her. Anyway, I have brought some clothes for you. I'll leave them on the table. We'll be waiting outside. There are some people I'd like you to meet. I cannot believe this. I look down at my neatly bandaged feet. I have to admit that while sore, they are nowhere near as painful as they had been two days before. Here's some salve I made for you. It'll help with the pain. Why would she even care? I was the reason she lost her job at the palace. Oh, she probably doesn't even remember me as the princess. But still, 
She has no reason to do such things for me. I ignore the cell for the time being and gingerly stand up, testing my feet for pain. The injury is definitely healing. I slowly walk over to the table and change into the clothes that have been left there. The dress is nowhere near as luxurious as the ones that I wear in the palace, but still it is far improved from my rags. All my life, I've never had to lift a finger. And now? I will not let them see how much they have rattled me. I refuse to break. Just watch me. I will free myself from this curse. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much for tuning in. And until next time, take care. Bye.